Hey guys, it's Alina. Today I wanted to demonstrate how to make this swirly animated painting in the Procreate app. I'll be using this Van Gogh inspired painting that I created in a previous tutorial using my Painterly brush set. To turn it into an animation, I will be using two different built-in Procreate tools. The Liquify tool, which will give us the swirly effect, and Animation Assist, which is a tool that helps you turn your static drawings into animated sequences. So let's go ahead and get started. So for my animation, I will be using this painting that I made in a previous tutorial. And I will put a link for that tutorial in the description so that you can follow that if you want to. Or you can just experiment with the same concepts that I'm going to show here using any artwork that you've already made. So the first step is to turn on Animation Assist. So we can do that in the gear icon under Canvas, Animation Assist, and toggle that on. So you see what has happened here is that we've got our timeline down here now with each of the layers representing one frame. So obviously we have a bit of a problem because we've got these texture layers, which is something that, that I frequently do with my paintings. I'll have a texture layer on the bottom and on the top. And obviously we don't want that to be part of our animation. So what we can do in this animation timeline is just to tap that and then tap it as the background. And you can do that as long as it's the first layer. So now it's always going to be there and it's not going to move around as part of the animation. And we can do the same thing with the last layer, tap that and make it the foreground. So now the only thing that makes part of our animation is this part down here. Something else that I'm going to do before I get started adding the frames is that I'm going to add one more layer and I'm going to name that guide. And in this layer, I'll just group it together with the texture top layer so that this now is the entire foreground. So whatever's in this group is always going to show as we're working on our animation, and this will help us. So in this guide layer, what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to start by drawing arrows so that I know which direction I want each swirl to go. Okay, so what I've tried to do here is I've tried to decide which direction I want all of these swirls to go, and I wanted to have them going in different directions if they were next to each other, just for contrast. So, so this one's going to go this way, and then this one's going to go this way. So they're kind of like that. So in just a moment, I'm also going to write some sizes on here, but I'll show you first what I'm going to do. So something else I wanted to mention about the animation assist is that you can press play down here. So we can keep doing that as we move along. and. The settings here, I will go over that in just a moment when we're ready. So what we can do first is that we want to duplicate this layer. So currently our painting is all on one layer and this works, this method that I'm showing you, it works best when you have all of your elements in this one layer. So what we're gonna do is down here on the timeline, we tap that, this one layer, and then we tap duplicate. So now we have an exact duplicate version of the same artwork. And you can see it here as well. So with this second layer active, we're going to adjustments, which looks like a magic wand, and then we're going to liquefy. And so on the liquefy options, there's a lot of options here, which we're not going to go over in the video, but the options that we will be using will be push, twirl right and twirl left. So for the settings over here, we're going to keep momentum and distortion at zero and pressure at 10%. The size we're going to change depending on how big these are. So what I decided was that I wanted this one to be at a size 70, these ones at 50, and these ones at 40. So before anything else, what I'm going to do is go back to my guide layer and just write down those sizes so that I know each time I make a new layer, which size that I used previously. So now that I have written my sizes in, I'm going to go back to this layer and I'm going to go back to liquify. So now that I have my sizes written in, I know that I want the big swirl to be size 70 here. And so I want the direction to be going like this on this swirl. So what I'm going to do is tap in the middle and it moves 
ever so slightly to the left. So we don't want it to be moving a lot. We don't want to just hold it for a long time because your animation is not going to look smooth like that. So for the medium swirls, I'm changing my size to 50. And I'm going to look at the direction and do one tap, one short tap on each of these consistent with the arrows I've drawn. So it's a bit tedious to keep changing the size every time, but it does make everything look consistent. So when we finished all of the swirls on the second frame, we can tap the magic wand again, and then we have finished that layer. And if you press play, you can see that there's just a little bit of movement happening already. So what we need to do now is to duplicate the layer that we just worked on so that we now have a third one. And we're just going to repeat the same process that we just did over and over until we are happy with the amount of frames that we have and the amount of movement that we have. So I'm just going to speed up the video while I do that. So I'm just, I just pressed play on this and I'm having a look at how it's moving and I've been using push on some of these areas over here and the swirling is happening here. So I think that what I want to do now is I want some of these centers to go a little bit smaller so that the swirling starts happening on the middle. So I'll just go ahead and speed up the video again and continue. So at this point, I have made about 17 frames in this animation. And as the frames go on, the centers get smaller and smaller. So here towards the end, I was just twirling the centers of the swirls. And then out here, it gets bigger and bigger. I'm just going to go ahead and turn off my guide and play that. 
And so on our settings, we've got ping pong and frames per second. I've set it to 15. You can make it faster if you want to, or you can make it a lot slower, but I think a lot less than 15, it starts to look a little too choppy for this kind of liquid looking painting. So I'm just gonna keep it at about 15. And let's go ahead and export that. So up to the wrench icon, we can go down to animated GIF or GIF, some people say. And so we've got two different options. We've got max resolution, which gives you a large file and a lot of good quality. Or as web ready will make the image smaller and less quality, but also a much smaller file size, which is more manageable. So it's completely up to you what you choose. I'm going to go with max resolution. And again, you can mess with the frames per second again here, but I'm just going to leave it at 15 and export that file. And so I'm just going to save that. And then I will have a look in my photos. And so we can see that it has been saved. And that's it. Now we can see our GIF in our photo library and share and upload it to social media or elsewhere as desired. So today we've looked at just one of many possibilities to use this Procreate feature and the possibilities really are endless. So I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and I'd love to see what you come up with. You're always welcome to tag me on Instagram or share your artwork in our Facebook group. If you have enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing as it really gives me a boost. So I really appreciate that. And thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.